Hello everyone, this is Mr. V. Hill, and this is the first video lesson for your Algebra 1 class. And today I'm just going to be doing a quick little lesson on, obviously up here, the order of operations. Which most of you should know by now uh, through some memorization device or another. The common one that I always hear is PEMDAS, and where P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. Um, so of course you do everything in the parentheses first, then take care of any exponents in the expression, then any multiplications and divisions, and additions and subtractions of course going from left to right, and you remember this by uh, this weird acronym, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And well, that's basically um, not so smart. Uh, it's not math, that's one thing for sure. Uh, nobody's Aunt Sally has anything to do with the order of operations, so please forget all of that nonsense. One way I like to understand the order of operations is basically through a tower, kind of like this, or a wedding cake, or however you want to think about it. But it's sort of we build the operations up from this base level. And in this base level is, of course, the simplest operation, which is addition. The very first operation you learned to work with in your elementary school uh, was addition. Because, well, it's pretty simple. It's basically counting. You know, the whole idea, well, if you have three fingers, and then you add on two more fingers, then you have one, two, three, four, five fingers. Wonderful. Not too difficult. Um, so that's basically it. Addition is kind of like counting. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three because two is one plus one and one plus one plus one is now three. See, it's counting. Um, within this base layer though, we also put in the, op the operation of subtraction. But the very nice thing here is that we can throw this one right out the window basically. Um, the reason being is that subtraction is really addition once we consider negative numbers. So for instance, if we have five minus three, we don't have to write that with this subtraction. We can write that as five plus negative three. So once we have negative numbers, we don't need the subtraction symbol anymore. And that's a good thing because subtractions, well, Subtraction is basically just a shorthand for adding a negative, and when you do this, it's very easy to lose a negative sign in a lot of situations. So that's why I'm not a big fan of subtraction at all. Um, we don't really need it. Okay, but that's the basic operation there. The base of the tower is addition, which is basically just counting. It's more than that, of course, and we'll get more into it uh, later on and we look at the uh, real number line as a one-dimensional vector space, but we don't need to think about it in that way right now. Now, above addition and, well, kind of subtraction, the next level up in this operation tower or wedding cake or whatever is the operation of multiplication. After you learned how to add and subtract, you went on to learning how to multiply and memorizing multiplication tables and all that fun stuff. Hopefully you did that really well so that you get some pretty good number sense. Um, it is important just to know your basic arithmetic skills pretty darn well. It'll help you out in the long run. And of course, with alongside multiplication, we also throw in the operation of division. But once we get a little bit of knowledge about different types of numbers, we can throw this guy out too. Because similar to subtraction, if we had say five divided by three, well that is the same thing as five times one third. So we can rewrite this division as a multiplication. So we really, just like subtraction, we can throw that out the window. We can get rid of division two once we accept that we have fractions or rational numbers of what we actually call them. And so big, very important thing is be comfortable with fractions. A lot of students come into Algebra 1 without a whole lot of skill with basic arithmetic with fractions. We need to fix that. 
I can give you some practice if you would like it. Not a problem. There's plenty out there for you. But the big thing we need to understand is why is this multiplication on top of addition? Well, the basic reason is that multiplication is nothing more than a repeated addition. Okay, and you kind of probably already have this down because you've done skip counting and that sort of thing as an elementary school student. But simply is this, if you take something like three times two, what we're really d doing is we're saying th we're taking three of these things we're calling two and adding them together. So three times two really means we take three twos and we put them together with an addition. We'll see why this is so important in just a moment. Uh, it seems pretty obvious, of course, but there's more to it than face value. So that's why multiplication is on top of addition. Above multiplication, then we get to our wonderful operation here of exponents. And the nice thing about exponents, the reason why they're on top of multiplication is because exponents are really nothing more than repeated multiplication. Okay, so of course, say we had two and we want to raise that to the power of three or two cubed. Well, what that means is we're going to take three of these things we're calling two and we're going to multiply them together. So we take three twos and we put them together with multiplication. Okay, so that's how our tower of operations works. We're not going to worry about parentheses or any other grouping symbols right now because a lot of times those grouping symbols are their own operations in and of themselves. Uh, so they're kind of their own thing, but we'll, we will address them as the year goes by. But first thing we need to understand is this little hierarchy of operations. And the reason why this hierarchy of operations is so important uh, is because of these things that we call the distributive properties. Technically, only one of them is called a distributive property, but I like to call both of them that. And you'll see about why in just a second. So the distributive properties work like this. The first one in abstraction looks like this. So we take three numbers and we have A times the quantity B plus C. Remember the parentheses here means multiplication. That's an another reason why we don't throw it in there in, in this case. The parentheses are a multiplication. But here we have A times this sum, B plus C. What the first distributive property says is that we're going to distribute this multiplication by A into the parentheses and to each of these terms in the sum. So A times quantity B plus C becomes, well, the A gets sent to the B. Then we still have this plus sign, the addition. The, a, the multiplying by A also gets distributed to the C. So A times the quantity B plus C is actually equal to A times B plus A times C. Uh, if you want to see why this works out this way, just look at a really simple example. Suppose we had, um, say, 2 times the quantity 3 plus 4. Okay. Now we could, of course, just do the arithmetic here and see what this is. Of course, it's going to get much more interesting when we start throwing in variables. But so here we would see 3 plus 4. We do what's inside the parentheses here. 3 plus 4 is 7. Then multiply by the 2, 14. But that's not what I'm going to get at. What I'm trying to get at is why actually this is going to equal what we would get by applying the distributive property, saying that the 2 goes to the 3, but it also goes to the 4. And so what we would do here is we notice that this multiplication is a repeated addition. So we're going to take two copies of this thing, the 3 plus 4, and add them together. So it's 3 plus 4 and 3 plus 4, but then we add those two things together. Two copies of the 3 plus 4 connected by an addition. That's what this multiplication means. Now, what we want to do is notice I didn't put parentheses in here for a reason. Uh, we can drop those due to what's called the associative property. But we might notice here that now what we can do is we have this 4 and this 3 here connected by an addition. 
And we also have what's called the commutative property, meaning that 4 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 4. So we can switch these numbers around all we want to. So we could rewrite this sum as 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4. That's the exact same thing. We just rearranged a couple of these numbers, which you can do with addition because it's what we call commutative. But then, notice here, we have two threes added together. Right? That's actually a multiplication. Three plus three is the same thing as two times three. Then we have that plus. And right here we have four plus four, which is actually two fours added together, so that is two times four. Okay. So that's why the two times the quantity three plus four is actually equal to two times three plus two times four. This two, or the multiplying by two, got distributed to both the three and the four. And whenever you're applying a distributive property, I like to draw in these little arrows just to help show that whoever is reading it that that's what I applied there, even if I'm just showing it to myself within my work. Okay, so that's the big idea here is that multiplication distributes over addition. So I like to put in to my picture this little arrow here saying that multiplication distributes over addition. Now if you're going to do this, my red pen's kind of done in here, but you get the idea. So this distributive property explains to us how multiplication and addition interact. And it's not that hard to understand with a simple example just like this. Now let's look at exponents and multiplication. For instance, suppose we had, say, 3 times 4, a product, and we're raising that to the power of 2. So this, re this exponent here is really nothing more than a repeated multiplication. So we take two copies of this thing, 3 times 4, and we multiply them together. 3 times 4, and 3 times 4, and we multiply them. All right. Now, again, we have an associative property of multiplication, and we'll talk more about that later, but that's why we don't need parentheses around each of these guys. We could leave them in there, but it doesn't really matter. But now, just like with addition, multiplication is also commutative, meaning we can rearrange these factors however we want. So we could rewrite this as 3 times 3 times 4 times 4. It's the exact same thing. But then we notice, well, hey, we have a repeated multiplication here and a repeated multiplication over here. And so 3 times 3 we could rewrite as 3 squared times 4 times 4. That's 4 squared. So basically, this exponent gets distributed to each of the factors in this product inside the parentheses. It's a second distributive property. A lot of times this one is called the product to a power rule, but I think that just gets confusing because really all it is is an extension of this idea here that multiplication distributes over addition because multiplication is repeated addition, and exponents distribute over multiplication because exponents are re repeated multiplication. So exponents distribute over multiplication. Okay. So that's how this works. One operation will distribute over the next operation down. Multiplication over addition, exponents over multiplication. Now, what if we wanted to do exponents and addition? Well, we can try this out. Let's think here. Supposing we did, say, 3 plus 4, and then raise that to the power of 2. We want to ask ourselves, is this exponent going to distribute into this sum? So is it true that this is going to be equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared? Is that true? Well, let's think here. Let's just do the arithmetic. 3 plus 4, that's 7. 7 squared, 
hopefully we all know that, is 49. So is that actually equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared? Well, 3 squared, that's 9. 4 squared, 16. 9 plus 16, oops, that's 25. And is 49 equal to 25? Well, of course not. So that does not work. Absolutely, positively, no. And the reason being that exponents are two steps above addition. You only distribute one step down. Multiplication over addition and exponents over multiplication. But the unfortunate part is every single year I see students trying to do this. Because once we get to variables, it's going to be really tempting to just say, oh, sure. If I have x plus y squared, uh, somebody's going to try to tell me that that is x squared plus y squared. And that is absolutely not true, as we saw right up here. 3 plus 4 squared is not 3 squared plus 4 squared. Doesn't work that way. So please, please, please don't try to do that. We'll talk more about how to deal with this in a little bit. Okay. So hopefully you took some pretty good notes over that. And if not, well, go back, watch this video again, take better notes, and be ready to answer some questions when you come to class next time. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.